Welcome to Hello English Teacher. Today let's look at the lesson Birth from Class 11 English. If you are watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the explanations of chapters from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. Birth is written by A.J. Cronin. He is a Scottish novelist. His best known novel, The Citadel, tells the story of a Scottish doctor in a Welsh mining village who later shoots up the career ladder in London. So let's move on to the lesson. So the story Birth is actually an extract from the novel The Citadel by A.J. Cronin. So the theme of the story is very interesting. It's about a young doctor called Andrew Mason who deals with a critical birth case. So the baby is born lifeless and all the actions he takes or the decisions he makes during this proves to be quite successful. So this is what we are going to see in the story. So let's go to the lesson now. Though it was nearly midnight when Andrew reached Bringover, he found Joe Morgan waiting for him. So Andrew Mason is a young doctor who had just graduated from medical college. So on that night he was late from work and he was coming back home. But when he came home he found somebody, a man called Joe Morgan waiting for him. So walking up and down with short steps between the closed surgery and the entrance to the house. So what was he doing? Joe Morgan was looking restless. He was walking up and down with short steps. So there was only a small distance between the surgery that is a clinic and the entrance of the house. So he was feeling restless and he was walking up and down. At the sight of him the burly driller's face expressed relief. So at the sight of him, so as soon as Joe Morgan saw the doctor, his face became lit up. So he was so excited or happy to see the doctor. Burly driller means, burly means a heavy weight man. So he was quite heavily built. And he was a driller. Joe Morgan was a driller. So the moment he saw the doctor, he found relief. A doctor, I am glad to see you. I have been back and forward here this last hour. The missus wants you before time too. So as soon as he sees the doctor, he addresses him saying, A doctor, I am happy to see you. And he says that I have been walking here up and down at least for one hour. The missus wants you. Missus means he is talking about his wife. So he is saying that his wife needs the care of a doctor now and she is actually in labor pain. She is going to give birth to a baby and so Joe Morgan feels that she needs a doctor to assist her. So that is why he has come to see this doctor Andrew. So Andrew abruptly recalled from the contemplation of his own affairs told Morgan to wait. So Andrew was immersed in his own thoughts. Contemplation means he was thinking a lot and he had so many uh, things running in his mind and as soon as Morgan spoke to him, so he just came out from his thoughts and then he asked Joe Morgan to wait. He went into the house for his bag then together they set out for number 12 Blaina Terrace. So what happened? He went inside, he got his bag the bag with this medical equipment or whatever and then he closed the door and both of them started walking towards number 12 Blaina Terrace so where Joe Morgan's wife was. So the night was cool and deep with quiet mystery. Usually so perceptive Andrew now felt dull and listless. So usually this doctor was so enthusiastic and he was very energetic about doing his work as well but then this time he was feeling quite dull and listless means he was without any enthusiasm. Maybe he was working overnight and he was so tired so he was without any kind of enthusiasm. He had no premonition that this night might call would prove unusual still less that it would influence his whole future in Blanelli. So he never had any premonition. What is premonition? having a kind of a warning signal or something. So he never thought that this night is going to be very crucial in his life because something great or something very different is going to happen that night and that is going to influence his whole future 
in Blanelli. What is Blanelli? It is a mining town in the Welsh area. So, he never thought that something different is going to happen. So, he just walked along with Joe Morgan to look at the wife. The two men walked in silence until they reached the door of number 12. So, who are the two men? Dr. Andrew and Joe Morgan. So, they kept quiet and they were walking and they reached the house. And then Joe drew up short. I will not come in, he said. And his voice showed signs of strain. So, he told the doctor that he is not going to come in. And his voice was strained. That means he was too tired and he was anxious also. So, he said the doctor that he is not going to come inside. But man, I know you will do well for us. And at the same time, he told the doctor that he was sure that this doctor is going to take care of his wife in the best possible manner. Inside a narrow stair led up to a small bedroom, clean but poorly furnished and lit only by an oil lamp. Here Mrs. Morgan's mother, a tall grey-haired woman of nearly 70 and a stout elderly midwife waited beside the patient, watching Andrew's expression as he moved about the room. So, he went inside the house, he had to climb the stairs and go to a room upstairs and it was a small room and it was poorly furnished. That means there was no many furniture inside and there was an oil lamp lit inside and who were the people inside? Joe Morgan's wife was the patient because she was lying down, she was going to have the baby and her mother and there was a midwife also. Who is a midwife? She is supposed to assist a midwife is a person who assists women in giving child birth, in giving birth to a child. So these three people were there inside as Dr. Andrew Mason went inside to see the wife. So as he went inside and as he looked at the uh, wife of Joe Morgan, the mother and the midwife, they just watched him. They were just looking at him as if uh, and wanted to know what he was going to do. So, let me make you a cup of tea, Dr. Back, said the former quickly after a few moments. So, immediately, Joe Andrew's wife's mother uh, told the doctor that she was going to make him a cup of tea. And she addresses him as Dr. Back. Back is just a way of addressing. And then what happened? Andrew smiled faintly. He saw that the old woman, wise in experience, realized that there must be a period of waiting that she was afraid that he would leave the case saying he would return later. So he looked at the mother and she was an old woman. She was also wise and she realized that um, the doctor was uh, going to have some time. He must wait for some time and that is why she was offering him a cup of tea. And she also thought that he might leave the case and go. So that's why she wanted to keep him there. So that's why she had offered him a cup of tea. And this was what Andrew was thinking in his mind, thinking that she is offering me a coffee, a tea just because she wants to keep me there and she was afraid that I would leave. So don't fret mother, I will not run away. So immediately Andrew said, don't get worried, I am not going to run away. Down in the kitchen, he drank the tea which she gave him. Overwrought as he was, he knew he could not snatch even an hour's sleep if he went home. So, overwrought means he was actually very tired but then he drank the tea and he knew that even if he goes home, he will not be able to sleep for one hour. So, he decided to wait there. He knew that the case here would demand all his attention. So, he knew that he had to be there and take care of the patient. A queer lethargy of spirit came upon him. What is a queer lethargy? He was feeling strangely lazy like he was not happy, he was feeling listless, he had no enthusiasm at all. He decided to remain until everything was over. But then he thought, let me remain until everything is fine. An hour later, he went upstairs again, noted the progress made, came down once more, sat by the kitchen fire. So what happened? After one hour, he went up again. He just looked at the uh, woman who was going to give birth to the baby and he made that everything is all right. And again he came back down because he knew that it was not time for her to deliver the baby. So it was still except for the rustle of a cinder in the grate and the slow tick-tock of the wall clock. 
So everything was quiet. So only the sound of the fire cinders falling in the grate and the tick tocking of the clock was heard. So no, there was another sound, the beat of Morgan's footsteps as he paced in the street outside. So apart from these two sounds, the sound of the fire, you know, cinders falling down and the tick tock, the footsteps of Joe Morgan outside could also be heard. Now why is Joe Morgan so uh, restless? Because it has been 20 years after he got married and after 20 years they are getting the baby. So that is why he was so restless. So the old woman opposite him sat in a black dress quite emotionless, her eyes strangely alive and wise, probing, never leaving his face. So this old lady who was sitting there along with the mother was just going on looking at the doctor. Like she was going on watching what his next step would be, what he is going to do, how he is going to help the lady who is going to give birth to the baby. So she was just probing, that means going on examining what he was going to do. His thoughts were heavy, muddled. So the doctor's thoughts were heavy. He had a lot of things going on in his head and he was quite confused about certain things as well. So the episode he had witnessed at Cardiff station still obsessed him morbidly. So he had experienced something. He had been with his uh, friend called Christine and they were talking about a few things. So that talk had not ended in a nice manner. So he was feeling quite unpleasant. Morbidly means feeling unpleasant. So he thought of Bramwell, foolishly devoted to a woman who deceived him sordidly. And then he was also having thoughts about some of his friends, that is one of them is Bramwell. And he was devoted to a woman who was deceiving him sordidly. Sordidly means in a dishonest manner. So this lady was only cheating Bramwell. Then he also thought of Edward Page who was bound to this shrewish bloodwen. So who is a shrewish bloodwen? Uh, shrewish means someone who has a very dominating character. So this Edward Page was also very close to a woman who was having a dominating character. And then he also thought about Denny living unhappily apart from his wife. So this man was staying away from his wife and he was not happy. So he was thinking about these people and their married lives and how they had not been successful at it. His reason told him that all these marriages were dismal failures. So while thinking about these people, he understood that all their marriages were sad failures. So it was a conclusion which in his present state made him wince. So what is the meaning of wince means make a sudden movement showing unhappiness. So when he thought about all these people, he was feeling very sad. So he wished to consider marriage as an idyllic state. So he wanted to consider marriage as something that gives you happiness and growth. Yes, he could not otherwise consider it with the image of Christine before him. So he was in love with a girl called Christine. So whenever he thought about Christine, he wanted to consider marriage something that is very ideal for men and women. So her eyes shining towards him admitted no other conclusion. So he did not want to think of anything else whenever he thought about Christine. He always felt that marriage was the best thing for them. So it was a conflict between his level doubting mind and his overflowing heart which left him resentful and confused. So all these incidents which he had been thinking about were only those that made him more confused and made him feel sad as well. So he let his chin sink upon his chest, stretched out his legs, stared broodingly into the fire. So he had to wait because the lady was not yet ready to deliver. So he just sat there brooding, means he was just thinking, looking at the fire there and thinking. He remained like this so long and his thoughts were so filled with Christine that he started when the old woman opposite suddenly addressed him. So what happened? He was sitting there and thinking, having all kinds of thoughts. He was also thinking about Christine. But then suddenly the old woman came close to him and addressed him. His meditation, her meditation had pursued a different course. Susan said not to give her chloroform if it, if it would harm the baby. 
she is awful set upon the child doctor back. So, what is that the old woman had come and told him? She had told him that Susan, who is Susan? Susan is Joe Morgan's wife who is going to have the baby. So, she said that she has requested that chloroform should not be given to her because she feels that it would harm the baby. So, what is chloroform? It is kind of an anesthetic. So, she did not want that to be given to her. She is awful set upon the child, this child doctor back. So, what is she telling? She somehow wants to have this baby in a healthy condition because they have been waiting for 20 years and after 20 years they are getting the baby for the first time. So, she was very keen on having this baby in a proper way. Her old eyes warmed at a sudden thought. She added in a low tone, hey we all are fancy, I fancy. So, he collected himself with an effort. So, what did the lady say? She said, yes, we are all looking forward to having this baby. Even I too want to have this baby in a very good condition. So, the doctor was getting ready for the delivery. So, it won't do any harm, the anesthetic, he said kindly. So, the doctor assured the old lady that is uh, the anesthetic will not be harmful at all. So, he said they will be alright. So, he assured her that both the mother and the child would be alright. Here the nurse's voice was heard calling from the top landing. So, the nurse or the midwife was with Susan and she was calling the doctor immediately. Andrew glanced at the clock which now showed half past 3. So, he just looked at that time. He wanted to see what time it was and it was half past 3. He rose and went up to the bedroom. So, he was on the ground floor. He quickly went up where Susan was there. He perceived that he might now begin his work. So, he understood that he has to begin his work. That means, Susan was about to give birth to the baby. An hour elapsed. It was a long, harsh struggle. So, he had to wait there near Susan for at least one hour and it was a very hard struggle for her. Then at the first streaks of dawn, straight past the broken edge of the blind, the child was born lifeless. Then after one hour, when it was dawn early in the morning, the child was born. But how was the child? It was born lifeless. So, it was a stillborn baby. As he gazed at the still form, a shiver of horror passed over Andrew. So, when he looked at tiny baby, when he looked at the baby, he had a shiver because it was not alive, it was a stillborn, it was a lifeless baby. So, after so much of struggle, what came out was a dead baby. After all that he had promised, his face heated with his own exertions, chilled suddenly. But then he was feeling very bad because he had promised not only Joe Morgan, but also the other old lady and all that everything will be alright. But then he was feeling so much of fear and he was feeling confused and he didn't know what he could do. He was feeling exhausted as well because after a lot of struggle, the baby was born in this manner. He hesitated, torn between his desire to attempt to resuscitate the child and his obligation towards the mother who was herself in a desperate state. So, he was in a state of dilemma because he did not know whom to take care first, whether he should look at the child or whether he should look at the mother that is Susan because she was also in a very bad condition and the baby was also a stillborn one. So, he was totally confused. He, went, he did not know how to resuscitate means to revive the child. So, he was in a state of dilemma. The dilemma was so urgent that he did not solve it consci consciously. So, he was could not think what he has to do first because both of them are equally important. So, blindly, instinctively he gave the child to the nurse and turned his attention to Susan Morgan who now lay collapsed, almost pulseless and not yet out of either upon her side. So, what happened? Suddenly, blindly that means without a second thought, instinctively that is naturally he quickly gave the baby to the nurse because he felt that he must take care of the mother that is Susan. She was not having any pulse, she had collapsed and she was going to a dangerous situation. So, his haste was desperate, a frantic race against ebbing strength. So, it was kind of a uh, difficult situation for me. He was trying to do his best 
he wanted to gather all the strength and take care of susan so it took him only an instant to smash a glass ampule and inject the medicine so he gave her an injection then he flung down the hypodermic syringe and worked unsparingly to restore the flaccid woman so he threw away the syringe and then he started taking care of this flaccid woman means lifeless woman so she was uh, not having uh, she was not able to breathe properly so he wanted to take care of her and bring back her to life so dr andrew was thinking about the promises he had made to joe morgan and the family so he was struggling very hard to take care of both of them that is he wanted to revive both the mother and the child so i hope you like this video let's look at the next part of this lesson in the next video for more informative videos do subscribe to hello english teacher like share and give your valuable comments below thank you for watching